TAC Capital. Technical analysis quickly. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Before taking any action based on the information provided on this channel, it is recommended that you seek the advice of a professional licensed financial advisor. Let's do this. Welcome to the channel, everyone. Let's talk about Ethereum here for a second. This is the four hour chart. And for those of you that have been following the channel for a while now, you know that the uh, the orange lines here, these are circles, fib circles. The green one's another fib circle. And the gray lines are fib channels. Uh, the dashed lines or dotted lines are going to be our actual wedges. So we have been in the, since June 18th, we've been in the wedge that went like this. One, two, three, and then what is that? That's four. And then we came up, we missed. And now we're crashing back down to this side to do our breakdown and out. So we know since here, we have been on a downward trajectory. And what we've been actually in is this blue wedge, okay? So the blue wedge, we are at one, two, we're working, we were working our way up to three. I think this may have been it, so I'm gonna redraw it. And then we'll be coming down to our fourth on the blue wedge before we break up and out. If we jump up to the daily and take a look at this on the from a ring standpoint, we broke through this ring here and then came crashing down. Then we started riding back up again, broke through the ring here, had a brief downturn, started taking back off again, and now we're working our way over to the ring here. So I would imagine that when we break yellow here, we're just gonna come down. And when we break orange here, we're gonna come down. Then we've got green here, which we're gonna break and then come down. And you'll find these different spots along the way as support and resistance. The Fibonacci channels are gonna act as uh, support as they come down. And you may, for instance, break down through this channel, break down through this ring, bounce off this ring, find support, come up, find resistance, and then be pushed back down out of here, down and so on. So they're kind of like rungs on a ladder. And you can see how well these rungs have been respected uh, I mean, going back a little bit more here, you know, we broke, well, we, we tested the ring here, tested it again here, tested it again here, finally broke through, went all the way up to the next ring, peaked out of it, and then came back down, tested again, rejected, came crashing down, found support on the green ring, then came through, broke through the orange ring and broke down. And that I've already covered. If you go back even further, uh, you can see like we broke out of, we found resistance here, broke through it finally, and then we hit fib channels and things, but the channels are no nowhere near as big of a deal as the rings. Just petered out, you know, bounced off this orange ring, came back down here, found the yellow ring, broke through it for a second, got rejected by the orange ring, came back down, uh, rejected by the yellow ring, uh, fell through the orange, fell through the green, found support on the yellow, broke up, rejected by the orange, came down, hugged the green, found support on the orange, then support on the yellow, Broke up through these, rejected by the orange three times. Broke through the orange finally here and shot all the way up to the next orange. And then retested it here, crashing down, retested it here, crashing down, and then retested it here, or found a new ring here, got rejected. But you can see all these points are excellent points to put in uh, short and long opportunities to scalp these trades. And because you can just sort of sit and wait for... Um, coins to break through so like an excellent thing for instance would be putting in a buy just on the other side of this of the orange circle and when it goes in you take off if not if it ends up getting rejected and falling down well then you get stopped out but you can also then take advantage of jumping in if you catch it soon enough so on these lines before and after is just a great place to do them and you'll know based on the ichimoku cloud too what's most likely if it's going to blow through them or not. So let me just turn one on and give you an example. Okay, right here, for instance, you've got this space growing between the Tenkin and the Kijin. So putting in a short right here would have been perfect. And then you would have crashed right down. And then if you look at the Kijin here and the Tenkin here, this retest here would be another good opportunity for a short if you didn't, if you weren't staying in your short from up here. So then this came crashing down. If you put in a long right here, you would have had the Kijin kind of calling the candles back up into this open space. 
So I can see someone putting in a long here. And as soon as you broke through, you would have come way down to the yellow here. So you would have got stopped out. But uh, coming through here, based on how these two were, I wouldn't have expected it to go through up. So you could have shorted this one and had it come down even further. Plus, you have to remember, the trend is your friend. And if you zoom out, you can see that we are in this yellow dotted downward trend. So as a general rule, you're going to be bouncing. So if you saw that you were here and you came down and you were here and you were working your way back up and maybe you hadn't even hit it here yet, you would anticipate this would be a short because once you come up here, you know you've got to come back down this direction. So you would anticipate that as the short. And so, so what I guess what I'm getting at is when you look at the totality of the circumstances and you look at the fact that you've got wedges, the cloud talking to you, and even Bollinger Bands, I mean, you can see here on the three day, we shot way outside the Bollinger Bands there as well. So that's another indicator that it's a great shorting opportunity. Then you can see here we had one, two, three, four, five candles sitting right here. And then of course it was caught there. Uh, so the chances are this is a breakdown. It's not going to linger for this long generally and then bounce back up. Then considering the trend is your friend, then considering the Ichimoku cloud, What's going on here? You don't have this one holding strong, the Kijin, while the Tenkin comes down to dip in to grab a candle and pull it back up. You have the Kijin melting down along with the Tenkin. So I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't have looked at the Ichimoku cloud and thought we were going to be going in and up. So every single last indicator that you had, that I'm using at least on these charts, is telling you that you were looking at more downside. So then what was it here that may, would have made us put in a long? Well, for one, this much of a downward trend requires us to zigzag you know, the other way at some point. So let's look at what the cloud was doing. See, this was holding a lot stronger, the Kijin, pulling it up. We also had uh, bullish divergence that popped up here on the RSI, which would indicate that we're going to do a turnaround. And then we've retraced down enough to have our one, two, three, four. So that's a nice big move. We've got a wedge that's really unfolding nicely. And then we've got on the Bollinger Band, we have this big wick out, which is generally pumping the brakes before we get more downside and then we come back up. We did that too on, on Bitcoin. See, over here, you've got another way outside the Bollinger Band. Uh, but we didn't just pump the brakes. We actually were able to reverse it for a second before we came crashing back down. So what makes the difference between this one and this one? Well, the, the size of the hole between the Kijin and the Tenkin for one, because here it's small. If you take, just take just this candle, it's nothing. Whereas here, when it popped out, it's big. See, we had a pop out back here and it was small and it just continued more downside. Another pop out here, but it's big. So that was a pullback. See, now this wasn't a huge pop out out like this one, but you can see the giant hole between the Kijin and the Tenkin. So then that's a good sign that's going to pull back up. Plus, of course, the bullish divergence and so on. So my point is, is looking at all of this stuff, you can really get an idea of where we're going in the market. So then the question is, where are we going for now in uh, Ethereum? We've completed this wedge. One, two, three, four. Sorry, we're in the process of completing it to where we get the breakdown out of the teal dotted wedge. We've got the Kijin here and the Tankin wrapping down and around, so you know we're at least going to be coming down to the 1606 mark. We're currently in the blue wedge. We've got one, two, three, so we're going to be coming down here at some point, which might end up giving us a white wedge that looks something like this. One, two, three, four, down and out. So we'd actually break out of the yellow wedge we've been in since the peak of the market, and then maybe come back down, retest that as support, and then take off. So that would be our bounce down, which is often the case when we have a downward wedge like this. And then we'd have a blue wedge in here that's looking like this that would connect us from this hit on the white wedge to this hit on the white wedge. And that would put it as a one, two, three, and probably working our way down here to a four, and this is going to put us into like the $400 range. And that would give us the yellow uh, ring that I was saying I think we'll find support on. So if we find support on the green ring and come back up, that's going to be around the $600 mark right in here. 
So if we have it here, then we'll just move our white wedge to be more like this. And that's where the blue, the white, and the green ring will all meet. If we end up breaking through the green and coming down to the yellow, then we're talking about the $488 mark-ish area. And the blue wedge we'll have is going back and forth like this. And then up, probably test, and then out. And you, you might even get that exact same bounce scenario off of the blue here. So if we drag the blue out like this, when we come off of this point and come up, we'll hit, do a bounce, might even find support here on the yellow ring. And then from there, go up, hit the white, bounce, again, possibly support on the yellow ring, and then up. So we're going to just keep hitting this yellow ring on the way up and right up the outside of it. And that'll take us up to the, well, I mean, new heights eventually. But I can see how the teal wedge that we're currently ending, which we'll be doing right around here, and the blue wedge that we're in currently will form together this uh, bigger white wedge that they're both in, and then we'll be breaking out out of there. As this wedge unfolds, though, we're going to learn a lot more. So just, you know, stay tuned. If you found this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, because I do my more timely updates over there because it's much easier than posting YouTube video. I really hope you found this video helpful. Uh, invest wisely out there, guys. And I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you in the next video.